welcome to CSIRO in Canberra. I'd like to take you on a little tour of some of our cotton biotech research here in Canberra and also some of our future cotton research that we're doing. So let's go inside. CSIRO is Australia's national science agency with more than 5,000 talented people and 50 plus centres in Australia and internationally. We have several science lines of business, agriculture and food, and you'll hear more about that in a minute, land and water, oceans and atmosphere, health and biosecurity, manufacturing, mineral resources and energy. The CSIRO Agriculture and Food Business Unit, which delivers our cotton research, has more than a thousand staff, students and affiliates across more than 16 sites across Australia. Our research programs span traits in plants, crops, farming systems, livestock and aquaculture, sustainability and food. Our cotton research spans breeding, biotechnology, agronomy and textiles. Our cotton biotechnology group is based in Canberra. So let's go on a little tour of some of our facilities and activities in cotton here in Canberra. At the CSIRO Canberra Science and Innovation Park, our cotton biotech team is based in one of CSIRO's newest facilities, the Synergy Building. This is a $100 million facility opened in December 2017 and brings together 500 scientists from CSIRO Business Units Data 61, Agriculture and Food, Land and Water, Minerals, Energy and Oceans and Atmosphere. This is our cotton biotech group based here in Canberra. We have a group leader, Dr. Philomena Petalino. We have team leaders, Dr. Danny Llewellyn, Dr. Ian Wilson, Dr. Viv Rowland, and Dr. Colleen Macmillan. We have scientists, technicians, students, and more. Let's go into the Cotton Biotech Net Lab. We use lots of state-of-the-art robots to perform high throughput precision tasks hundreds of times and with tiny volumes for testing genes and how they are expressed and what genetic markers are present in our cotton plants. We grow plants in a world-class growth facility. One of these is the CSIRO Phytotron. Inside are temperature-controlled glass houses and fantastic banks of many state-of-the-art growth cabinets which have controlled temperature and light. Here are some of our Nicotiana benthamiana plants that we use to test what genes do. These are especially useful for us because we can do quick tests with many genes in just a few days. To further test some of our favorite genes, we also grow these model plants, Arabidopsis, and get results in about six months. The proof of the pudding for our favorite genes is testing them in cotton plants, and this takes about a year, and we are very good at doing this. Back in the Synergy Labs, we perform tissue culture in specialized facilities to produce transgenic cotton plants, this takes about a year to generate plants that are transformed with new genes of interest. Here is a PC2 glasshouse in which cotton plants are being grown. Let's take a look inside. Here we grow lots of cotton plants and track and measure their growth. Most of the time we focus on flowering and fruit formation through to the opening of the cotton bowls with mature cotton fibres. We and others have been doing deep investigation into how these amazing fibres are formed and what molecules work together to make such amazing fibers. The properties of the cotton fibers are measured to see what has changed. In our various labs, we have several machines to test fiber parameters. Here is some cotton fiber being tested with a cotton scope machine to measure fiber maturity, diameter, and many other properties. This machine me measures thousands of fiber snippets in just 30 seconds. One of the things I find infinitely fascinating is that the cotton fibre is actually a single cell, one of the longest plant cells known, at more than three centimetres long. You don't need a microscope to see the cell, simply pull one off a bowl and voila. On the day that the cotton flower opens, amazing events start to occur. On the surface of each little tiny seed, small little cells start to grow out, rapidly elongate, and by about three weeks later, 
Each of these fibers are super long, but only 15 microns in diameter. When the first cell emerges, it's surrounded by a soft, flexible cell wall, here outlined in green, and this primary cell wall is made up of a range of molecules that allows rapid expansion and growth. Later, a very thick additional cell wall is laid down on the inside of the primary wall, here outlined in blue. This secondary cell wall eventually is super thick and mostly made of cellulose, plus a small amount of other polysaccharides and proteins. Cellulose, by the way, is simply ultra-long chains of glucose molecules linked together. We've been completely intrigued with this wall and have been researching how it is made because this wall is important for the amazing properties that cotton has. Eventually, the secondary wall is so thick, it fills most of the inside of the cell until the cell matures, dies, and dries out after two months. We know a lot about cotton and cotton fibers, and we'd like to tell you about one of our cotton fiber projects that we sometimes call fantastic fibers. So let's take a step back. Globally, we know there's a textile pollution problem. So for Australia, what is the problem? In Australia, we purchase about 28 kilos of new textiles per person per year in an average year. But 23 kilos end up in landfill. That is a big pile of pollution. We know that cotton is biodegradable. Here is Professor Knox and another scientist who have tested this in the field. And you can do this for yourself too. You bury your favorite textile in the soil, maybe some undies made of cotton or not, and you see how long it takes for it to degrade. If it is cotton, it degrades well, especially if your soil is healthy. There's also been some research published, for example, here from May 2019 on how biodegradable different types of textiles are. In this study, cotton is the most biodegradable in liquid environments, rayon degraded slightly to a less extent, and polyester did not degrade very much at all. This is a problem because microplastics and microfibers are polluting our waterways and our soils. This is of concern for the environment and for living creatures, plants, animals, and ourselves. So one of the things we focus on is the four R's. And this comes to the points of sustainability and circularity. For sustainability and circularity in the textile industry, we can employ the four R's. Reuse of textiles, recycling of textiles, reducing the volume of waste, and also redesign of textiles. For redesign, this is where our project comes in. CSIRO has invested in future science platforms, and one of these is the Synthetic Biology Future Science Platform. This is research for the future. It includes the fantastic fibres research that we are conducting. So you can see there the core team that really kicked off this project. On the left is Dr. Philomena Petalino, Dr. Madeline Mitchell, myself, and Dr. Viv Rowland, along with other amazing scientists at CSIRO, really looking deeply into the cotton fibre to see what we can do to insert into that cotton fibre cell or its wall molecules for conferring new properties, properties such as stretch, waterproofing, colour and more. This is science for the future. We are using principles of synthetic biology, which is design, build, learn, test, and our knowledge of cotton growth and molecular biology to redesign the fibres so that they are still biodegradable and renewable, but with properties that are different. Remember, the cotton plant uses solar cells, otherwise known as leaves, to harvest sunlight and then use air, water and nutrients from the soil to produce cotton fibres. So, by inserting molecules into the cotton plant that produces new fibres, we hope to redesign textiles in a new way, thus contributing to sustainability and helping reduce pollution from textiles and textile waste. Here we are inserting some genes into our small test system to see if they work. So these are our Nicotiana benthamiana plants. 
we also test our genes of interest with Arabidopsis. That is a model plant that we can get results from in six months. We perform biomechanical testing on the stems, both tensile tests as well as compression testing, and then we see if the genes we've inserted have made a change to the biomechanics. Finally, for the big test in cotton, we make transgenic plants. It takes about a year to make cotton fibre that is transgenic, and then after growing up more test populations, we can test those fibres to see if there's a change in their properties. Then it's off to the ginners and the spinners and the designers to create, hopefully, sustainable, naturally plant-based textiles for us to wear and to use as consumers. Well, I hope you found that little tour interesting around cotton and our research. Thank you.